In this video, I'm gonna show you a full breakdown of the best Amazon online arbitrage sourcing method for 2024. The exact method I used in my own business to generate over 450 grand in just a 30 day period. And if you're new to my channel, welcome, my name is Miles. I'm a 25 year old seven figure Amazon seller on a mission to help as many guys as possible build a side hustle or business of your dreams this year. And if you're interested in a bunch of additional good beginner content, as well as advanced sourcing strategies, I don't share anywhere else free. Make sure to get registered for my next free live training. It's linked in the description, linked in the pinned comment. Let's get right into the video. Uh, Nike.com has like an early uh, Valentine's Day sale going on, like 25% off right here. So we're going to do a little bit of manual sourcing and see what we can find on here. And then Alex is going to moderate the chat as well. So we can see 25% off in the apps. So that's pretty significant. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and figure out stuff that we think we could, that looks cheap enough that it's probably selling for a profit on Amazon. We're gonna reference over to Amazon and see if that's the case here. So right off the bat, we can see almost 3000 items discounted. Very good chance some stuff is gonna be good. Just name brand products, no running ads, no buying, no doing any marketing, no creating our own product, just Nike stuff. People already know, like and trust that has proven sales to show on Amazon. Let's see what we got. So we want to be looking for like basic color types of items right here, right? So I'm going to, just for a higher hit rate, I'm going to go in here and put men's, right? And then, so now we can see, okay, there's 1100 men's products right here. So we want to be looking for like basic colored stuff that with that extra 25% off, because we're going to be checking out on the app to get that further, right? We're going to see, okay, what here do we think could sell for double or more on Amazon after the 25%? The way fees break down, okay, these guys are 22 or right there, I think we might have a shot on those. Um, let's see if this was like a more basic color right here. I like think these guys sub hundred could be good too, right? I'm just thinking what they could be moving for in here. And then if you guys got any questions, put them in the chat too. And if you, if you want to like, like if you're, if you're having a, a hard time with the initial search that comes up, you can sort by like everything with black or oh, white, yeah. right? You can go that. Yeah. Let's do that actually. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like common colored stuff. That makes a ton of sense here. Yeah. So we can see like now we're looking, okay, these, so it's 79 here, minus 25, 113. And it says extra 20, but if you check out an app, which you guys will see once we get on this product page, it's even better here. So uh, what can we think we could get? Oh, these, ooh, 15 bucks here looks chilling, man. That looks like a good play potentially. Definitely. Got the wind great, running great, here. Yes, I have been focused on FBA that I've been elected FBM. Is it a good idea to learn more about FBM to take advantage of holidays like Valentine's Day? Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. Like the cool thing is, you know, you could go to your local Nike out tomorrow and buy stuff that has FBM competition on it. And then you would learn everything you need to know about FBM if you had some sales to fulfill, right? And such, just get in the game and, you know, you'll figure it out as you go. Okay, this looks like a deal, bro. At, uh, at like 23 right here, Jordan Post slides. I'm actually almost positive these are good here. Um, and then we got a whole mess of other listings we're going to look through here too. But I think we might be oh, starting yeah. out one for one. Let's, oh, yeah, here we go. Check that out, bro. 52. And then we just got to make sure the size availability matches Perfect. up here. Let's see. And sales rank, obviously. So this is obviously isn't going to be a video where we do a full seller amp and keep it tutorial. But all you need to do this stuff is seller amp right here on the top right, and then keep a right here the charts that are basically like stock charts for products. Um, but I got full tutorials about those on my channel too. So we want to hit the variations right here, and then we want to figure out which are the most expensive variations here. Ah, yeah. Ooh, game time, baby. Yes, sir. All right, we're starting off hot here. Fifty-seven bucks, right? So now this is a size seven. Right, so we have to make sure that this guy sells well, which we're going to figure out by verifying on Keepa that the price has been stable over time. So it's thirty bucks, and then we're taking twenty five percent off. So we want to multiply that by 0.75 here. So we're paying twenty two five. So it's an eighty percent ROI. Our current buy box here, right there, and this is an FBM seller. We can see this item is FBM friendly, being that there's only one FBA seller and five FBM sellers. So I would definitely plan on FBM in this just for speed here. We can see that is a little bit worse FBA compared to FBM. I'm estimating that weight based off up here. If you're ever unsure about FBM shipping costs, um, just go to howtofbm.com. It's a free FBM guide I got for you guys. So we can see even at the low price, looking at Keepa here, which was like 46, we're still fine on something like this, right? We're still making, you know, 10% or uh, t uh, 10 bucks profit pretty much pre- uh, pre cash back with sales tax factor. And so like, that's a good skew there right off the bat. And literally it's just like sitting there, we can see we've been profitable here pretty much like, pretty much like the vast majority of the past three months here. Like that's a good skew. Let's see any other sides showing here. Someone in the, someone in the chats just wants a uh, more clarification on how that profit number shows up. Yeah, exactly. Right. So we're, we're paying 22 here. Right. And then it's say it sells at 46. Let's say it sells at 50. Right. So that leaves after the Amazon fees, the sales tax and the product cost, right? About a 26% profit margin and a 58% ROI. So obviously when you sell products on Amazon, there's going to be fees, 
and such, right? So there's obviously shipping involved, there's sales tax, there's the product cost, and then the Amazon fees, right? So seller aren't factors in all that. Yep. Let me see. Okay. All right. Yeah, bro. Check this out. So we got some other sizes too. That's the nice thing about shoes for beginners is you might have three ASINs on one thing. So like, this is a pretty decent product here. And we can see like, we can validate the movement of these other ones too here, right? It's also important if you're a beginner, this has 300 sales per month about, but that's all the variations. You're going to gauge velocity based on the unique Kiva chart for each size here, right? So we can see this item clearly sells considering we can see oscillation in the offer count. It's gone up and down the bottom chart. And the price gone up. Cool. So that's a W here. Let's keep rolling. Let's see. What if the damage, what if they damage the product on a return, having tons of returns? I mean, if it goes to unfillable then it, or unfulfillable, then, you know, you, you'll get a, if you have the settings set up, you'll get it sent back to you and you can analyze it. Sometimes the product's not actually damaged. You can actually send it right back in. Otherwise, maybe if it is damaged or if the box is damaged on a pair of shoes, you can list them on eBay, try to get some money back. But that's just kind of part of the game. Yeah. Yeah. And the cool thing is over time, right? When you start, you, I recommend you kind of just take what you can get because you still end up being pretty profitable, but everyone long-term starts doing like wholesale and stuff, which is typically consumable types of products, you know, uh, pet supplies, beauty, grocery, et cetera. And there's very, very low return rates. It's just, those products are a lot harder to arbitrage. So if you're not ready to cold call suppliers, it makes sense to focus on this kind of stuff. In my opinion, this is another skew that's close at 22. We're going to take off 25% here. It's just not quite good enough right there. It's about an 11% ROI and we mm -hmm. would probably have to FBA this. So what I would do in this case, so I would scroll down here and I would put this on an almost good spreadsheet in Selleramp to check back on it in the future. So this one click just with the almost good, it one click exports it out to a spreadsheet. And now we can check on that lead in the future because if this comes back in stock, it becomes pretty good here. Roshi runs, you wear these in high school, Alex? I think I had a pair. They of course, have... man. Of course. You got to love have... that. Yeah, you bro. You got to love that. Back in high school. Yeah, you, everyone did, man. You got to love that. So yeah. let's see. Damn, it's crazy, brother. These are so cheap. So we're paying like 38. I've sold some of these on Amazon at like 80 way back in the day, like two, three years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think they're good. I assume if they're this cheap on Nike.com, they're probably not going to be good on Amazon these days. But let's see. Okay, the all black ones are absurdly expensive. Okay. Black and white, though. Okay. Oh, and the Navy Johns. It's actually a pretty good price for the first one, too. Let's see. Ooh, ooh, all right. A size 15 is out of the stratosphere. Okay, a size 15 is out of stock. So that would be good if that was in stock, assuming looking at it's 86. No buy box, though. If you're a beginner, don't worry about items with no buy box. It typically just means they're selling well. Price is pretty elevated. Right, so that, that's a good skew to put on an out-of-stock sheet in selling here. Okay, yeah, we're getting cheap. Yeah, 14. Okay, all right, so these Rochers are absurdly cheap. So at uh, 55, selling by cost 38, those are absolutely not going to be profitable. Can you explain who creates these listings for Nike? I know Nike has no, no longer has a business relationship with Amazon. So are these just left over when Nike sold on Amazon? Yeah, and sellers create new ones too, right? And that we can see some, like if, if, if we hop down here to the variations tab, on Kiba down here, we're going to be able to see that some of these variations are pretty new variations right here. We can see some of these are, some of these are pretty new, right? 72 days old. These are just probably just other resellers creating them, honestly, right? 72 days old here, but let's yep. see. So we, yep. what size we got? So we only got a black small here. Okay. So let's see one black small. So a lot of these are good if they're in stock because it's uh 15 cost you. It's like a pretty good price for a nice item like that. Looking at the price action here. Boom. All right, here we go. Game time, game time folks. So it's uh it's like fifteen bucks here, fifteen bucks into thirty one here, thirty one of seven, five right? Yeah, about five bucks profit, thirty percent ROI, um right there, uh not bad. We got a uh, win C, nice and uh yeah. So we might even be able to sell higher here. Cool thing about a product like this is that we can see it's been a lot more expensive in the past. So if we take a look at Keepa, we have a ton of history of profitability on this type of item, which makes it the kind of thing that it would it would make sense to potentially test if you're you know had just found this on your own here. Yep. What, five are, where, what are you basing your shipping cost on? Yeah, man. So you want to put in your shipping costs in the seller ramp back end. So my shipping cost for my own Amazon business is right around, we got a couple listings right here for this guy, is right around like 22 cents per pound. Um, but I have it factored in at about 40 cents per pound in bulk in my seller ramp profit calculator right now. That's for FBA where you ship products in bulk to Amazon. If you're looking to do FBM, I have a free breakdown on FBM shipping costs. If you go to howtofbm.com, that'll answer all your questions on FBM pretty quickly for you. FBM is like a really good thing. Like I know you've done really well for that in Q4 in the past, right, Alex? Back to school and everything. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's a no brainer for back to school and Q4. I mean, yeah. Just, can you talk you, on some of the benefits just cause like people might not be familiar and like, I, I completely agree with all of it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. One of the biggest benefits, especially during like December is you turn over your capital a lot quicker. Uh, you, you basically can list the product the same day it shows up to your house. When you consider like if you send it FBA, right, it takes you a day or two to prep it. And then you send it out. It takes a week to arrive to the prep center or to the Amazon warehouse. And then might take them up to two or three weeks, especially during busy times of the year to actually check that product in. And then you have FC transfer. So it could, it could be a month before the product's listed when you listed it same day. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, typically it's not that low, but it totally could be. Yeah, right? and, and the yeah cool it's not is... normally going to be like that, but just, um, you know, getting Basically, to yeah. uh, turn your capital over. Also like testing the product, right? You can, you can understand so like cool. how quickly you need to replant it if you sell 10 in the first day. When you bought that was your test buy expecting to sell that in a month well then you know you can replant a bunch more or maybe it takes you a couple of weeks to sell that 10 and then you understand how many you should be buying for your next replant uh, a lot of benefits to fbm and uh i definitely recommend it for like most seasonal times or holidays there's always good products to find it just opens up kind of a new category for you depending on you know which which holiday or which fbm items you want to look at yeah, so not only do you get to learn quicker, right, but you also get to beat your competition to market. So you deal with a lot less price volatility because a lot of people have like deep seated beliefs that either FBM takes too much time. I would argue FBM takes a lot less time than FBA because of how much quicker you learn. I think it actually saves you a lot of time um, right there. But yeah, I mean, spot on right here. So, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is the right item here. Like, I'm pretty sure that's the same dude in the picture there. Or, or at least they, they look pretty similar here. Yeah, um, I, I'd say it looks looks very similar. Yeah, very, uh, yeah and we can see like the <laughs> windbreakers right there. Like, yep, yep. All right, yeah, okay, cool. So 98 bucks, you always want to take a look and really make sure it's the right product, right? So 61, take off 25%, we're paying like 46 into 90. That looks great here, man, right? And then we want to validate via Keepa that the price has been there over time, right? So we can see, we take a look over time, if we hit the data and then buy box statistics right here on Keepa, now we can see who's getting the buy box, how often, and at what price, right? So we can see the buy box is predominantly going between 90 and 105 here in terms of the past 30 days, right? So like the cool thing is our current estimate is on the lower end of that. So this is a this is a profitable skew. Um, and we can take a look at variations too and see if it's a little better. But you guys can see like Valentine's Day is coming up. There's going to be a ton of manual sourcing opportunities similar to this. You guys got to be putting the work in on your own here. So we can see like this 84, like that's that's clutch. That's close at the 46 cost or so I think it is. Yeah, right. 84 right there, 98, that's cool. Um, any other all black ones? Black small now, cool. So, and then what about this other listing here too? Which is a little bit higher sales rank, right? But it is winter, like if the keep a charge does move and it's gonna be fine. Someone asked if, if I bought some Nike products on sale but they have no listing, can I create a listing? Uh, sure, I think it's a little bit extra effort. I wouldn't really be worrying about that if you're a beginner too much and such, but you definitely could. Yeah, I, I think it's probably better to just stick to the yes. listings that are on Amazon. They're already ranked Maybe. well. You'd have to re-rank, you know, get your product to sell and rank. It's not going to show up on page one the day you list it, right? It's going to probably be a month or two before it picks up. Yeah, unless like people are searching for it like crazy. But yeah, only buy listings that you can see proven sales history on. Because the nice yeah. thing is that reduces your risk a lot too. Let's see. Okay, we'll take a look at a couple more of these. But definitely like bullish so far in terms of this, just the sale and manual sourcing in general. Like if you're a beginner, uh, manual sourcing really only makes sense on like your favorite websites, which if you're a beginner, you obviously don't know your favorite websites yet. So focus more on storefront stalking if you're a beginner, because that's going to teach you your favorite websites, your favorite suppliers, your favorite types of products. And if you're just randomly doing manual sourcing, you don't already know that a website has good inventory, you're going to waste a lot of time if you're just going on Walmart, going on Costco and searching for random products. Let's see, 90 bucks, take off 25%, selling for 90, so that is uh, definitely not good. 90 times 0.75, yeah, it's absolutely not good right there, so we'll keep rolling. Yeah. Right here, we got the three fourth tights now. We already looked at the uh, the full length ones. Let's see what we got. Someone asked if the product appears profitable, but is only being FBA, should I FBA too, or can I try to make more profit on FBM? Yeah, so that doesn't necessarily mean that FBM is going to be more profitable. Um, it might, depending on taking a look at the seller and profit calculator, but if everyone's FBA, it could be that maybe no one's tried FBM. That's why you don't see any FBM buy box share in the buy box stats. Like, for example, this item, we see a ton of FBM buy box share, being that this FBA column has a lot of not check marks, right? Yeah. So that means a lot of people are FBM in it. But yeah, I mean, it depends on the numbers and, and test it out. You know, if you're in zero day handling time, if you have a repricer on, right, which you can 
watched the tutorial on my channel in terms of getting going with repricing, right? You know, you're going to get lucky here and there. And then listings that are very FBM friendly, like this product, which we can anecdotally see data wise that it is getting a lot of FBM buy box share, you know, you're going to be able to clean up on FBM. And I love that you're, that's like a, a fantastic question too. So we're paying 15 here. Um, it appears we are, damn. So it's like all these weird colors we're missing out on. Yeah, white. Yeah, okay. So that's not good here. All right, let's get back on track. Okay. Free run 2018s here. All right. Is, oh, is cool. the bought in the past month column accurate on Keepa? <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of that, man. I wouldn't even really worry about it. It's definitely not not accurate. Like it's not going to say bought 200 if something hasn't sold, but buy based off what the Keepa chart looks like. Okay. So these aren't good here either. Let's see, these are these other free runs I've, I've done a lot of in the past. Let's see, these are probably pretty cheap here too. Let's see. All right. Shoot or shoot. Okay. We got the women's Johns too. Okay. All right. I like where this is going here. Look up the women's Johns right here. What quantity limits do you normally set your on your listings? Oh yeah, like two to five. That's a super good question. If any of you guys are unfamiliar with that, it basically is setting up maximum order quantities so that competitors can't see your stock counts. It's not crucial that you do it, but it's definitely not a bad idea to. Um, and the way you can do that is uh, just go on YouTube and search like uh, max order quantity Amazon FBA and you'll find it. Okay, this is a banger skew right here. Let's go, baby. Come on now. Come on now. Stop playing with me right here. 71 here, right? 71, take off 25%, right? Easily. Boom. And I only did there, I did a little bit too much there. 71, take off 25% right there. Yeah, man. It's about 33 bucks profit, 63% um, ROI. Life's good here, right? And it's all FBM people too. So you could probably honestly FBA this at like 125 or something, man. If yep. you at least test it out, right? Because FBA, you can get the buy box higher. Um, two years. So yeah, we got a whole mess of skews here, man. All these white and black ones chilling right there. 56. That's, that's good work right there. Well, let's check these men's ones too. Well, while we're on the variation listings, Matt's asking if I have access to a lot of variations on a website, which variation color size do you pick to buy? What do you look for variation sure. column on the keep chart? Yeah. Boom. So variation column, incredibly good question. Um, the biggest indicator of demand is going to be this new offer count history chart, which you want to, you got to like move your columns around to match mine. Reviews is relatively important, but the new offer count gauging the velocity is going to be way more important. You also want to use common sense around best colors and sizes. And then the anecdotal uh, data on each keep a chart is going to be variation specific as well. So like this keep a chart we're looking at right now is only this specific size and color comedy. So you've got like 12.5 here. Ah, oh, okay. So only the coupon code only works on certain of these. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. It's actually a lot of them though. Okay. Let's see. Gray 6.5 here. Yes. These are pretty, pretty cheap black ones. Great. 12.5. Okay. We're not liking those here. All right. This listing. Ooh, this listing is good though. Let's see. Cause we got this other listing of these guys. Let's see if these are in stock. This is a banger here. What does, what does the check alerts panel mean in the eligible column and how do I get eligible for products? Yes. Sure. So that's typically in terms of ungating. Uh, I have a good tutorial on my channel. Uh, that'll help you get on data really easily. It's it's not hard to do in, in uh, 2024 at all. So just check the link in the description or go on YouTube and search Fulls for Miles Ungating. There's also going to be a really nice guide on there that's going to help you get a bunch of ASINs auto ungated too. Probably not Nike, but a lot of brands is actually an almost good spreadsheet item right here are going to work just in terms of auto ungating too. And uh, and such. That's really just like a good walkthrough of what manual sourcing looks like. Um, reverse sourcing is going to be better for beginners, but manual sourcing is going to be more profitable once you have a favorite set of websites. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, let me know down below. Make sure to subscribe for more. Get registered for the free training and check out the free course right here and my full on gaming tutorial right here. See you guys in the next one.